the rise and fall of consciousness. Hey guys, so how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Just did a little video on um, a lot of information, um, which kind of dropped in. Um, it was huge to try to unpack it all. So kind of want to do this video just on the little part of it um, as far as the rise and fall of consciousness. Now everybody, uh, well, a lot of people know of the, um, I want to say like the image of the iceberg concept where you have the, the water line, you have the unconscious, and then you have the consciousness um, arising above it. And so the conflicts, you know, and all the turmoil that's happening in the unconsciousness, the aspects of that, whereas the consciousness that is arising is awakening um, to all that's being created, right? And from that point, you have that viewpoint that I can see, right? The veil is shifted. It's, it's allowing you to see everything that you need to see during certain times of evolution, which is ebbs and flow of life, right? So from that perception and reality, to look at how they explain it from that side um, is to look at it as far as the ebbs and flow, um, the rise and the fall, you know, when they go back to the concept of the, the fall of humans um, and how it is the unconsciousness, right? And so in the, in the third world, right, the 3D version is like the unconsciousness, right? And then you have the veil, right, which is a waterline. And then you have the consciousness, which is source, the 5D. So you can kind of look at it that way from this example. Right, so let's use this as a simulation, right? And so if you're in the 3D world, <laughs> which is the unconscious under the water, you kind of see it, but it's murky and you kind of don't have full clarity of what's going on. You're living in this illusion. Um, and then you go into the rise of consciousness, which is the upheaval, which we're seeing now. This is all being stirred up, right? Because so you can have clarity on it because a lot of people are wanting and having questions, right? And so to bring forth the knowledge and wisdom, we have the stirring up of the ebb and flow of life. And so that brings the rise in consciousness. And so when we have these times um, to make change, right? It's the ebb and flow of life to make change, not necessarily the ebb and flow of life, right? We've not been thrown down here into this reality, the 3D reality, because we're bad and sinners, <laughs> right? We come to play out the role to make change, to live a life um, in the better and evolution, right? And so the experience of being here is in creation. So we're creating um, here in this level of our awareness, right? And so to have life, to make life, to experience life from different levels, to enjoy life, to um, have love and abundance, right? And so for that, we have to have it goes from the absence of it, which is the shadows, the darkness, the unconscious, right? And so we can look at this from the mind level, right? The conscious level of a person or existence or where we can see it on all levels, right? Which is, it applies to, right? So it's not just for the person's um, mind or their, but it's for the evolution of everything, right? We can see this in all things. It's applicable to everything, right? So it's universal. Everything is universal. You can basically use it for everything. If you look at religion, you know, there's points in it that goes across the board for all religions. Everything else is just fluff, right? And so the fluff is the unconscious version. It's muffled, right? So there's no clarity. It's just what we believe it to be. But then you have the points, which are the truth, right? The consciousness, right? So from there, it takes its own form. So there's always unconscious for every truth, <laughs> right? And so, but it's the choosing of it. You get to choose it. And no matter what dynamic you're in, you're experiencing, whether you live in India and you live here and you have this religion, you have this belief, or you have this, we all have choice in choosing either of it. But anyway, not to go too far down in, in that direction. <laughs> um, so the point they're trying to get across is, <clears throat> you know, uh, the rising, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are, um, and I mean, I, I have myself termed as that, you know, spiritual teacher, master, 
but it's through the evolution of me working on myself, um, having an understanding my experiences, and, um, and a lot of people are going through that. And so a lot of people are becoming aware. They're rising up above, above the, the unconscious level, right? And so that's what's serving itself to bring in the awareness um, for others to see it, right? And so there's a lot of expansion of people that are waking up right now to help share the knowledge and wisdom that they're receiving and then expands through the evolution of itself, right? And so for those who are not awakening themselves, they're actually getting the information, right? So not everybody needs to awaken at this time and not everybody's going to awaken at this time because it feeds them, right? And so it only takes a certain amount of people to awaken a certain time in the timeline so to make it more across the board the masses right and so if you look at it this way your environment your environment dictates who you are being in your experience so if you look at people who hang out um you know with the rich you know they tend to take on those characteristics those abilities they learn they become a part of the environment you have those who turn or hang out with those who are not, they have that environment. Your environment influences you from your parents, from your friends, from your schools, from everything, right? So your environment, I mean, it dictates your existence as a human form, your beliefs and who you think you are, but it's not who you are because you're part of source. You're the one divine source, which is the soul instance, is the being of source, right? So your existence as a human realm and reality, your environment plays a part and a role in it. And so it does dictate some of the things that you're doing if you're not aware and you're in the unconscious, unconscious stream of it, right? So for that to be a part of it, you have to have so many that are awakening. And so when you're in the environment of so many, so if you have strategically going back to Othello, right? On the board that you're playing, if you have so much, we'll use the white for the light and the shadow, the dark, right? If you have enough white pieces strategically placed on the board, then you can change all the pieces that aren't of the light. So it feeds into the consciousness, the awareness, right? And so it is strategically placed all these beings who are awakening up in consciousness. And so although you feel like maybe you are a person who is awakening and arising at this time and the people around you are not, trust me, it's not because, and you may feel lonely and separate because you're not around in an environment that others are. And we want to be around others who are to be in a part of their tribe to have those people around us, which can help us to stay in our rise to consciousness. But you being a part there is like one of those white pieces on the board. We are all strategically waking up and we are all in certain places. Um, so that way it comes into the masses and everybody wakes up. So you are an environment in an unconsciousness environment, waking up so you can feed out into your environment. So you may feel like others are affecting you, but you are the one affecting them because it's changing them as well, right? And so it feeds it's each other, but it feeds back and forth in the light and the dark, the shadows, right? <clears throat> and I don't wanna use the word darkness you know as far as evil because there is no evil and just want to clarify that there's no devil there's no evil there's no hell it's the shadows aspect of ourselves and when we feed into that it, it can become an unwanted situation right and so it has nothing to do with something out to get us or anything like that that's just fear mongering so when we are strategically placed like othello we are feeding the masses with the higher consciousness so it's not on purpose that we are, if you are in that situation where you are not around others who are a part of the tribe, it's not meant to be that way. 
and it can be very lonely. And so I want to just put that out there because they're giving that to me to share with those who are awakening and you may be in a place where um, it's maybe a lot of shadow stuff uh, for the people around you, um, but you're helping to clear that out, right? And so just try to stay with that and just try to remember that because we're all here and signed up for being here. There's so many of us who have signed up to come in to make change on that level and through the great awakening. <laughs> um, and so just remember and stay steady in your stream of consciousness uh, that you're right, helping to rise all of us, right? Because when you have it strategically placed on those levels of awareness, right? Um, and you see how there's only so much above the, the, the diagraph where there's that small portion and all this down here is so much more in mass of the unconscious to the amount that's on the top of the water, right? And so although we, uh, there's only a small portion of people rising to the top, right? And so, because we don't need everybody to, because it just feeds the masses, right? And so they'll be attracted to certain people, certain teachers, people who are sharing certain information that's helping to rise up, that they have the consciousness that they went through, that they've changed. And so it's all on purpose. It's been strategically placed. And there's been a lot of us souls who have chosen to come in at this time to help play it out and to be a part of the bigger role and we may not know or have that realization or remember that we did and so it's not that it's unconscious it's just not the awareness that we have that big of a role it is kind of an unconscious thing that we forget because we don't remember who or why we came in for but those who are awakening know that it is for you and so that consciousness that is streaming through you is waking up others it's radiating out through others in the environment that you're existing as and so it is making a change and it may take a little while um and so just stay true to yourself in your um your awakening right and just keep going um and i um had that you know in in my experience of <laughs> my awakening you know the people around and it's like you can only do what you can do but don't get pulled into their drama right and so allowing yourself to be stay true to yourself in your own awakening, right? And so from that point, at some point, you know, as we are all in those few that have come in and agreed to help awaken uh, the existence of the planet, um, as you're staying true and maneuvering and moving through the world, uh, wherever your position or meant to be, is where you're meant to be. And they keep telling me that. And it's like, I, I mean, I know I've been there and all through my awakening. It's like, like, I can't tell these people this because <laughs> they don't understand. Um, and trying to share, you know, my experience um, with my knowledge and wisdom is not always easy to put it in words. Um, and so, but I do my best to explain it in the videos and the books and things like that. Um, and then with the channeling information to bring that forward for you guys. And so whoever is relating to it or maybe understanding it, you know, will be drawn to what I'm able to share. And so that will be with everybody else who is uh, awakening as well at this time. And so as you're sharing and putting out in the world, you know, and just even just being, even if you don't want to do anything, you know, we have people who are awakening and they're just existing from that point and they're not helping to share out the information, which I didn't do for a very long time, but reluctant, I guess, <laughs> um, because the people I was around weren't, quite there yet right and so they weren't ready for to have the information but then it started to open and evolve and so more people are starting to wait but you can see it streaming through the rest of the consciousness right and so a lot of people are waking up and they're sharing it you can see it all through social media um everybody is, so it's it's working it's the pivotal moments in life where we come into this point of the iceberg uh, we're able to bring the consciousness in and then help raise all the unconsciousness up, right? Now, from that point of view, uh, then we have the uh, rising of the conscious and then back down, you know, what happens after the rise, right? We start new, right? So we make change from that point of view. And so as we're, we're leveling up, sort of say, right? And so from that point, then we can make change and see things and that's what we're actually going through on a macro level. And we go through it all the time on a, on, a, on a micro level, right? And so 
it's there the rise and the falls it's ebb and flows of life uh, to make change you know in the world and what we want to see and express it's to make a new world right and so as we're moving through um, from the old times of yesterday um, which is just a recording it doesn't actually exist anymore into the future which doesn't exist anymore because it's today that we make a choice of for the future um, it's it's now that's important it's the pivotal moment of now which was where we are in the rising of the consciousness and so we're going to see a lot of shadow stuff come up and i kind of talked about in the other video kind of circle back around a couple times on that just, um, because they do want you to know just to keep choosing love and peace no matter what your external situation is and happiness um, find that for yourself because it's going to be an upheaval and it has been and, and is going to be until we are moving through this period of time but the consciousness is there not just because we are special or better than other people and we tend to make that out if we're in spiritual ego <laughs> right and so it's not that you are and they aren't you're you've just come to help rise right the consciousness your soul chose to do that but first it had to work through the existence of the being that it's existing in right and so i went through a lot of changes myself to get on board with this um the human form Laura, right? The identity, the form, the ego, all had to go. <laughs> so I went through the, the uh, what do you call it? The dark night of the soul, the integration of the ego. Not that I don't still have some ego um, because you still need to exist as some kind of form here and to start still play a role. But part of the old ego that I had, my illusion that I thought I was, um, this person's identity is gone. It's integrated and so I understand that I am not a human version more self, right? I have the separation uh, from self that's been integrated and no longer exists, right? And so when that disappeared, it was like part of me just, it was like this whole emptiness, right? So it was totally gone. What I filled up with who I thought I was, these belief systems, this teachings, these programs, it's just gone. Then I had um, the near-death experience came back, you know, into this realm uh, after being there and then the angel experience and then just moving on my path with the meditation yoga and then self-work transforming everything from that point of view on different levels but as we as a soul is awakening it wor it's working on the framework right so it can exist within the framework um, from the higher level of existence and so a lot of people are awakening just by people being here who have done that and done the work and so we can't always expect everybody to do the work because they're not here for that they're here for them to be in the simulation as we're experiencing it from the point of view where their environment is going to affect them if that makes sense and so you just being you here that signed up to help change and transform the existence that we're existing as into a higher understanding and relevance um, of what truly is versus living in the shadows, the unconsciousness, right? Because we can't always have everybody living here because then that's, it's just going to be like the creation of like, I don't know, <laughs> you name it, everything that, you know, it, we, we don't exist like that. You know, there's always these ebb and flows of consciousness coming in to rise up our awareness, right? And we've seen that over times, you know, generations, but like we're in that right now, you know, the Great Awakening is what they're calling it. Um, and so this time there's upheaval, suffering, um, internal, external, you name it, across the board on all levels. Um, <clears throat> so back to the topic, you know, um, you know, people who are just in the environment and you're around, if you're uh, one of those who came in to help, they're going to, you're going to help to change their environment for them. So they're going to have more understanding and knowing and it's not about you giving of yourself right because then you're just giving your power away it's just you being in your space allowing your energy uh, of vibration to evade into the space where others are in the environment so they can be a part of it and again we can see that you know depending on the environment that you've been in we can see the rise in consciousness about it and so it can be a little bit of struggle for those who are awakening and then having to be uh, not around a tribe 
of same or likeness uh, to where you are on the path, right? And so there can be, and I've had that experience, but, and so for, for those who are, you know, having the awakening, um, you know, if, if you are needing support, you know, again, you can just, if you're interested in book a session, um, all the other thing you can do is create a support system for yourself in your area, maybe see and do it online if there's nobody in your area. So you are taking up like minded people and inviting them, you know, into your space. So it, it's, um, I feel like that's important too, as they're saying, you know, for those who are awakening. Um, as we're shifting through the consciousness, you know, in the last video, you know, I kind of talked about making choice, no matter what your external situation is, is more for those who are going through the suffering, but for those who are awakening um, <clears throat> and having suffering because they're feeling like they're alone, uh, there's nobody they can relate to. Make that support system for yourself, right? And so that's going to be important for you to maintain your own space, right? And so whether you do it through sessions with people um, who are awakened or whether you do your own <clears throat> group in your area and maybe make a once, a once a week meeting time with others or whatever it is uh, so we can band together, you know, and because although we are strategically placed in individual spaces and levels of environment, um, doesn't mean we can have help and guidance of other people. Uh, to support us, right? Because it, it's all going to help. We all need to work and, and be together to help rise the consciousness, right? For not just ourselves, but for others, right? But first we have to do our own work, right? And so the soul makes the space within the being of what it's choosing to be to create space of the rising and awareness, right? And so that's the coming into the body and then raising its consciousness. I know a lot of people think, you know, and I've had some people who've been on the journey of trying to teach others that, oh, well, you come in the body to be of the body, and then that's it. You just play the roles out, and you be here. Actually, it's not just that. It's we come into the body to tra transform the existence of it so we can be fully in the body of the soul, not the human, which is to transform it and to live from the point of the soul of existence. So that's the raising of the consciousness, which is the rise and the fall. So... There's a purpose to, like I said in another video, there's a purpose to the rise and the fall of consciousness. And it's not to be a sinner or, you know, of the play, being in the play. But yes, we are here to be in the play and to experience life. But it's not to be of the human version, but the higher consciousness version of self, which is the soul existence um, in the human form, right? And it's the taking up the body to make it and transform into the existence of higher consciousness. Right? And so it's the play of the higher conscious coming into lower, you know, and then the ebbs and flow. It all kind of is simulated and goes together, if you will, um, as far as understanding um, and kind of connecting dots and bringing it together. So when they talk about the fall of the human, you know, that's religious, you know, but it's the same context. Um, so it's not bad. You're not a sinner. You're not being punished. There is none of that on the other side. Um, it's just here what you want to believe in. That's what they make it into. They've transformed the original written in texts of the understanding of it into being dogma. And so that's for control over others, right, to exist from that place so they can be their God, their Savior. Um, you have to follow me and walk with me to be saved. But it isn't, right? And so <laughs> um, what you make your God is going to be your God, and that's what you're going to suffer, right? It's the consequence of replacing the part B, your plan B, uh, of plan A, which is source. Whatever you put in place of source is your own suffering, right? And that's your belief systems and your constructs, your limitations, the box that you're going to live in. So from that point, as we're stepping out and moving forward into the higher consciousness, as we're moving through and evolving through, uh, which is no longer acceptable, at this time in the face of humanity, well, I don't want to say humanity, but the human race, um, it's, you know, it's needing to shift out, which is what you're seeing, you know, everything arising at the moment. And so in sharing that, they want to just let you know that, you know, there's the ebbs and flow of life, which is constant, you know, until everything is resolved. Um, and so it'll be continuous until we all change and transform it which is the different lives after a lifetime 
So we all come in and play a part. It's like the game where you have the torch and you run and then you pass it to the next person and then you run and you pass it to the next person, right? And so these are multiple lifetimes uh, going on, um, not just within yourselves, but in others. And so because we have the framework that we exist in, which is time based, right? <laughs> and so from that reality, understand that everything is based on time because we're here in the timeline, uh, which is this reality of 3D, right? The form which is existing at its, itself, that's creating a way for it to uh, transform and open an awakening, right? And so as you are based on that level where you are in the moment, um, you're going to be able to transform it. So say your last time, lifetime, your last lifetime, you took up one life and then you ended it. And so from there, that is your next set point. You can never regress. It's only forward move, moving, right? Just as, as it is um, outward focused. So we're always moving forward. We can never regress. And a lot of people will teach that, oh, you know, you're human now and so you're lucky. And so, no, it has nothing to do with that. So we don't regress back to being an ant, right? Just because we stepped on an ant. It doesn't work that way. There's no punishment, right? That's just ignorance. A belief system right and so all religions have a um under the water view all muffled right and so they make it and change it the way they want to so that way you stay and stick with them <laughs> and learn and evolve through them right you're god so then you never reach the con the true consciousness right and so when you're doing that you're putting that in place of source right your true divine connection so to erase that, we evolve, right, from consciousness and to seeing the clarity, which is above the water um, in the higher consciousness constructs that you're seeing from, you know, based on where you are. But you never go and regress. There's no regression. There's no extinction. There's only evolution. And so even those existences that were before has reoccurred in many lifetimes and evolved over time into other existences, uh, which is where we are now in human form so we've come a long way from where we used to be and a lot of people will look at it you know from like the anima um, um the little i don't know ig, ig, i don't know what the nerd word is but like those little parasites or people would say oh you came from this little parasite and you evolved into this and now you're a human so you know you went through the the animal kingdom, you know, the plant kingdom, you went through this kingdom, this kingdom, and evolved through. Um, so there's a lot of different takes on evolution, what that is, but there is no regression, right? It's only a jumping off place, right? So no matter where you are in that level on the timeline, right? And so, for instance, um, it's going to play across the, the board on all levels of our lives, whether it's relationships career, money, whatever it is, is wherever you are is where you're jumping off at, right? That's your paradigm. People talk about the glass roof where you can't um, earn anymore. That's your highest potential that you've ever been at in the past. But if you break through that, you can earn more, right? And so looking at your glass house, where is your level on all levels, right? What is your past experiences of relationships, you know, what is your experiences, right? And they kind of bleed into other lifetimes from different perspectives. But your most current lifetime is the most present of, if you look at it, it is the continuation of where you last left off. So everything that exists here now in this time frame and this moment is a, a continuation of a past lifetime. And so what you do now is going to make your next lifetime chain of evolution into the future being that you're going to be uh, where you are when you take up the next lifetime no matter what that is in creation and so sometimes we create on multiple levels of awareness timelines that we're not even aware of you know at the same time and so in that existence that understanding um it may be just that uh, you've come back in because if we've had like 10 lives of human um, experience, you know, what is it that have we had all experiences that we need to have uh, multiple levels in the human form? And so we may take up the human form um, like 10 times, but within that human life, um, we may choose just because we are taking up a human form doesn't mean that we're not going to not exist as that. It's, it's what we are choosing to exist as based on that timeline. So, for instance, 
this lifetime as human form, uh, you may want to experience a loving relationship. Next lifetime, as human form, you want to experience, you know, a, a negative relationship. So, or a hating, or loving, or kindness, or poor, or abundant. So we take up multiple lifetimes within one form existence for different reasons on different levels of experience. It's not all okay. One lifetime, I'm a, a plant. One, I'm an animal. One, I'm a human, and then I'm bam, 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 done. Right? And it's we have multiple lifetimes in each existence of form. Right, which is different subjects, different topics, different understandings, different learning, because there's so much to understand and learn from the perspective that we can only take up in that form because then we have the ability because it's all there for you. Again, I've done a video on, you know, your whole body is a form in of itself and we just take it up to have the experience and we can evolve through it uh, by learning, by being one with it, right, which is not being it, but coexisting with it so we coexist with the body it's already existing and all the memory and dna it's kind of like putting on a suit if you will and then this is who you are when you wake up from sleeping when you've been on the other side um and reworking everything from that side and then coming back in and waking up into the human form we coexist with it we're not it Right? But a lot of people think we're the body, the mind, the emotions, the feelings, you know, the identity, who we are. Um, but when you are understand that you don't, you're not it, and you only coexist with it, you're not fully in it, you're only attached to it, that you can exist with life outside and inside much better and have a different perspective than you would when you are in it, which is the under the water, the con unconscious, right? So when you are coexisting with the body, your framework, then you're above the existence of the, the structure that we talked about, um, the unconscious iceberg <laughs> or the conscious iceberg. Um, but yeah, from that point of view, we can have a different view take and understanding of life and how we exist with it and coexist here not on, on many different levels, uh, multidimensional beings exist in all together as one in one unit as as whole, right? And so from that point of view, as we're existing, you know, and coming forward, um, we'll be able to view that from a different place. So as we're coexisting with others, just know that, you know, everything is um, on purpose, intentional, not that what's happening to you is on purpose and intentional, but everything is strategically done for a reason and purpose that we may not understand or have the awareness of it until till we do, <laughs> right? And so it was for me um, having an understanding why I was being going through all the the awakenings um, that I went through to wake up to be where I am now. I'm like, well, okay, so now what, right? <laughs> so what am I doing now? I'm still here. I'm still existing. Um, I'm doing this. And it's just to keep going from that new stage, that new place that you are, right? From your new existence, right? And that's the rising and the falling of consciousness, right? And it's not just to go back to sleep and go back to the way it was, the past, the consciousness, but to keep going and moving forward. And those who are wanting to go back to the past, um, you're going into resistance of what is now new, right? And so that's where you fight, feel the pulling away from others, the resistance, the struggling, the suffering, is when we're trying to hold on to the past and not move forward, right? As we're raising into the higher consciousness. Um, but from that point of view, you know, they basically just want you to know, um, you know, it's not that we are being a spiritual teacher, that spiritual ego, if you're, oh, I'm better than them, or I'm the teacher, and, you know, you're not listening to me, blah, 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 and we're trying to come from that point of view, you know, people aren't always ready, and so that's why, because we're not always at the same place at the same time, it's either going to be you as the one that it is emanating through from others the awakening process and so if you yourself have not had the awakening you're going to feel the resonance of it from those who have right and so you have either going on you have those who are and have gone through the awakening in of itself because that was the part and the role of them 
um, and then you have the resonance which resonates from them outwardly to others in their environment so then they have the wakes and the quakes and the feelings and the emotions of the awakening and getting the aha moments right and they're like oh and then they're awakening up right and so they actually don't have to go through the whole process but they wake up by resonance of being in your field right and so how do you affect another person and wake them up you don't have to do anything you just have to exist in your trueness right and so that's what makes it perfect because it's a dynamic that's reaching out to others and you don't even have to do anything it's just you being you right and so you're flooding the field of awareness from where you are from the awakening that you went through and so if you have it all strategically placed like Othello, it all turns and emanates through the rest of it, right? And so it all turns over to light. And so then when you have your light beings, we all rise, right? And so it all has purpose in the play um, of what's going on and what we're seeing and raising up. We're at some point, you know, we're going to be ending the 3D, right? So, but it is not that we're getting rid of per se, the world in of itself, the earth, the creation, but the existence of it from that point of view, right? And so it's to raise the consciousness of the world, right? Which is the point of being here and the existence and clear, taking the shadow aspects and making them into light, basically. And unfortunately, it has a lot to do with identity and suffering and who we believe we are and our attachments to stuff. And that's what's changing. Right? It's the letting go, right? And so it's when you suffer to the level of where you're either willing to make the change or you're just willing to just let it go, <laughs> you know? And those are the only two options that you actually have um, when the suffering is so great, right? It's the change of evolution, right? And so uh, we do have barriers that have to come up and to be seen um, at this time and as we're moving forward. Um, in order to make that change, you know, and so, you know, just try to look at it from that perspective um, is what they're sharing and just be, you know, uh, who you are. If you've gone through the awakening, you know, again, set up support systems for yourself so you can stay uh, in your own, own lane um, and not be taken out. <laughs> um, you know, there's no real aggression, but we do have uh, some things that, you know, if we're not fully awakened on all levels that we can um, still have those little dips, you know. And so just uh, make the change stay and make choice. You have choice, free will. So hopefully that's been helpful for you um, and to kind of understand some of that. You know, we don't need like herds and tons of people to waking at a, at a certain time. And so there was a time frame. So like you have the... Um, the three waves, right, that have been talked about for eons as the, the awakenings, you know, as everybody's been going and shifting through, which has been creating the waves of time passing through on that evolution. And so from that point of view, we've all kind of been waking up a little bit by little bit. So that's where you're maybe having the, um, the residual energies that's waking you up and not per se that you are of that wave, but then that's why there's the wave, right? Which is a continuation of that awakening, the, the sparks of it. And then the timeline brings up the arising of the consciousness that's above the water, so we can all fully see it at some point. And then we rise to change and then the fall, which is to live out the new space of evolution, which is the new timeline that it's actually taking up, which is that space that it's created for us to see of it, to make the change. And so from there, we wake up and we make change and we keep working on that from that evolution into the next ebb and flow, which is the wave of the new waking, <laughs> right? And so we're always continuously evolving from one point to the next point. It's a continuous evolution. So it's the ebbs and flow of life, um, which is the changing of the ties, the times, um, from one consciousness to the next, from one to the next. So when you have a rise in consciousness, um, all is to see, all is there to make change, all is there to choose. And then it, what you choose, you take into the next timeline. And so what are you going to choose during this time? And what are you going to work on in this lifetime? Right? And so are you looking at your stuff? Or are you changing it? Or are you going to continue to choose the same old stuff in the past? 
Are you willing to let go of all that stuff and change your energy, vibration, the way you view things, how you exist in the world, your understanding of it? And so with that, it brings change on many different multiple dimension realities as we move forward. So the time and change that we rise up is the amount that it comes back down. So it's, it's in frequency, the higher, the lower we go, which brings us back into further of the dimension realities um, of it to make those changes from that new space. So whatever we have rised um, to the level of awareness is we're going to see the shadow of it. And so exchanging one for the other on the timeline, which exists from itself in coexistence, which is not the word of itself because that's not what you are, but what we're going to be living out and playing out is what we're choosing in the rising. We're going to experience and live out in the, the lower version, right? The shadow aspects. So if you're choosing love, you know, when we come back down from the rising into the shadow aspects or that's the existence that you're going to be at, right? Um, that level of awareness, right? If you're choosing the opposite, not love, the absence of the lack of, then that's what you're going to be living um, through that timeline, right? And so it's all an experience. We're shifting and changing and evolving uh, multiple different dimensions and realities um, to raise consciousness on all levels, right? And so as we are moving forward, you know, just be mindful of what you are choosing and what you're wanting to be part of and what you're wanting to experience, you know. Um, for me, I say a mantra <laughs> pretty much every night, you know, I choose love, I choose abundance, I choose happiness, I choose um, health, wealth, being, you know, and so those are my nightly and morning choices right and so i choose that to be that in my life um, at all points that i'm striving towards to be that to show up as right and so that is not just for myself but to share that in the world and to be from that place and so there are things that come up for me too that's still in my shadow that um that i'm working on you know and so those are the dips and falls right and so again going back to the falls whenever somebody says that it's not true it's not like that you're evil or sinner or punished, you know, it's just that is the um, parts that have not met the light yet, right? And so you meeting those shadows is you're meeting yourself <laughs> to make it light, right? And so um, it's the exchange of energy and vibration from one to the other, which is a learning about yourself. It's all about self-development, self-evolution, self understanding you know and so it really we use the outside world to help us to work on the inner world right which is why it's there it's it's a mirror it's like a, a movie a version a view of ourselves our true selves that are showing up where we are you know depending on what that is so for instance if we haven't done any work on our relationships we might have bad relationships showing up in the world for us um, and so we can see it but it's how we see the exchange right are we seeing it as blaming and shaming another person or are we looking at it as ourselves because we are self projection of ourselves into the world that we're allowing it to exist for us so we can see it on a different level and if we have that understanding we can change it on the energy and vibrational level otherwise we're going to keep experiencing it which is the rise and fall of evolution on a personal level and a macro level Right, but it's all taking place here and now in the moment which you're choosing. Right. And so from that part of evolution, we're able to make great strides, especially now in this time as everything is evolving, coming up from the shadows so we can see it because a lot of stuff isn't serving uh, the purpose of where we're going, right, in that direction. And so whenever that happens, it has to go. And so there is upheaval. And then that is the the arising of the consciousness, because for you to see it, we have to have the light shed on it, right? And that's going to be um, not just you on a personal level as you're awakening, um, but it is for you, but it's also for others. So we share our understanding or experience of it from a perspective of awakened being, but also at the same time, we have to do our own stuff, our own work, right? And so some teachers will actually, which I was trying to talk about in the beginning and kind of got off on track uh, to something else, but coming back to when spiritual teachers teach, you know, they're always sharing it out to others, but don't doing the work themselves. So we want to do and apply it to ourselves, not just share the information and knowledge, because you do have those teachers out there who are awakening and sharing it, but not internally doing their own work, right? And so how can you be a, a true teacher if you're just sharing it and not 
applying it. It's like doing yoga, right? So we learn meditation and yoga, but do we apply it out into the world once we have obtained that understanding and knowledge um, based from that perspective, which is the same as higher consciousness. We have to apply it in the world, right? And so if you're teaching somebody not to react or to respond, but yet you go out into the world and then you have an interaction with somebody and then you respond like Karen, then how are you use, using the knowledge that you're awakening from, right? You're not. You're just sharing it out into the world and you're not utilizing it and make we have to integrate it as spiritual teachers being here because those who are awakening um, are here to help evolve like i was talking about the a fellow game um, but you have to employ it within yourself first uh, which is awakening that i went through um, on a lot of different levels which was kind of a fun journey and understanding and, and practice and so i got a lot of enjoyment out of it and so uh, just a continuation to working on yourself so that way you can help transform the world outside and it emanates out through the consciousness um, for others. It's not always just about speaking and sharing. It's about you being uh, what you're preaching, you know, walk, talk, not just talk to talk. That came up in another video. Um, so, um, so to kind of just expand on that a little bit, you know, we have to be the one that we say that we are, not just say that we are and we aren't, right? Which is the creation of an illusion in of itself being, you know, portraying itself without doing the work, right? And so that's emanating out into the world as, as well as part of the illusion. If we're not actually doing that um, work for ourselves and implementing it in our daily lives, right? Because what is it good if you meditate and then go out in the world and then you yell at somebody, right? So you're not taking it out into the world, right? And so... Um, and it's great to have the understanding. And then I, I did a video on a Karen, right? You can video, you can check that out because although it's not going to stop things, um, for you having the experience, um, because you may still have things that you haven't explored yet in your awakening. Um, and so that'll serve to arise as well. So you can see that all aspects when you bring all aspects to self and to the light. So then you are then one with source. So the more you can bring to light, the better, right? And so you can expose itself to shadows, um, which is basically what you're living in, the dynamics, right? And so from that point of view, you can see who you truly are um, on all levels. And so when we are making all light within our existence, then we are one with source, right? Which is the paradigm where we're able to return to source fully and wholly of who we truly are. Um, which then it, there's no separation because you have the understanding and knowledge of it. So when you are a match to something, law of attraction, then you are of it, right? And so it is either your attachment here, you're one with source. So that's your plan B. Uh, your attachment is here is what you're attached to what you're attracting to yourself so if you're being a, a mean and hateful person you're going to attract that to your life right <laughs> if you're being a loving kind you're going to attract that to yourself or to those who are needing that right and so it's all law of attraction based um on the other side is being the one with right so attraction here in physical form and then Plan A is source, the trueness, right? So whatever we're not true, one would source and understanding and fullness and trueness and whole, then we are separate and we're being in the attraction, right? We're projecting and creating, right? In the experience so we can see it, bring it up with the heaval, upheaval uh, so we can see it in the light, right? So if that makes sense um, from that, they kind of want to just throw that in there. But when we are not um, practicing our walk, uh, as far as um, you know, being a teacher, and I'm not saying that I haven't had that experience, but just being mindful of what's happening within you as you're in the experience, and you can kind of see what's going on because you'll have things playing out, you know. Um, and so I, like I did a video on the Karen, so how we respond to a certain situation. Right, is uh, your choice, right? We get to choose how we respond to every situation, what we think about it, how we feel about it, what we're gonna experience and what we're wanting to play out. But now is again, like a, a very pivotal time where uh, with the rising of the consciousness, whatever we're choosing during this time frame is what's gonna play out in the future. Um, 
more than normally. And usually that's just the way that it actually is, but it's definitely more on a conscious level as we uh, continue forward and we go back. Um, I don't want to go back down because we're not really going back down, but it's a new jumping off point. It's a living from a new way of existing, right? Which is more of a 3D on a higher version uh, of existence, if you will. It's kind of like an upgrade to 3D, <laughs> you know? And so we'll be existing from a different level of awareness at that point, which is coming into where we are using our um, intuitive abilities, more um, kinetic, more uh, instead of genetic. Um, and it's, it's more about being intuitive, learning your abilities. And I did a view on that. So you probably want to start working on uh, opening your, you know, abilities and getting rid of all the fears based teachings around that um, fear, you know, which they've instilled in a lot of people for eons to come, you know, because that's what we needed um, at that point uh, for evolution, uh, which is a whole other topic, which I might do another video on, on that, um, you know, the purpose and the role of the religion, you know, just to give a synopsis, you know, it was at that point where we needed it for that reason at that time, as far as the race of the human existence, you know, because uh, it kind of helped curve the animal existence within us, you know, from shifting from the the unconscious human version, so animalistic, if you will, to the human conscious structure. We had to have certain things in place being separate from source because when you're separate from source, you need rules and regulations. And I did that. That's your plan B. Talked about in a different video when you don't have um, your direct connection with source, you need a backup plan. Right. And so then there, that's where all your rules and regulations come from that we have to put in place for to exist and coexist with anything and everything else. And that's why we have so many different laws and rules and regulations because it just keeps evolving like that. Um, um, if you were to be one with source, right, in your existence on all levels, it would be love. And so you wouldn't need any rules and regulations because love just is and love just does and love is experience itself as love because you are true to yourself and so from that point of view you just love right because you can't be anything or anything else other than love as source is right and so it's the mirror reflection of separateness that we are and needing rules and regulations and laws put in place that we live by but it's very limiting because you're separate <laughs> in an individual right and we have different things that we want to work on and experience, which is the laws of the world, not the laws of the universe, because the law of the universe is totally different than the laws of the world, which is different video. <laughs> um, and so that's a lot of other information dynamics that it all kind of just ties in. It's a lot to unpack. So trying to put it all out in different, you know, videos and everything, but definitely walk the walk, choose, um, Choose higher consciousness, you know, uh, love, peace, bliss, um, regardless of your situation. Um, keep going, working on yourself. We are in evolution of itself at a pivotal time in this moment. And they say that they love you all.